Have you ever felt insignificant? Have you ever felt like you couldn't figure the simplest thing out? I'm going to show you something that we've all done. You know your password. You know that you know it. And you keep typing it in, and the computer keeps telling you you're wrong. You even, wherever you placed it, maybe like my mother, you have a post-it note on your computer with all the passwords, which kind of defeats, uh, anyway, okay? She doesn't anymore. Trust me, because we needed it a few times. Anyway, so, so maybe, she's watching this morning, so maybe you have that, or maybe you put it in your phone with some secret code so nobody will know your password, or maybe you wrote it somewhere. Maybe you actually have a wallet from 1952 that you have a card in there that has your thing. So you looked it up, and you know you typed it in right. And you're frustrated, and you're aggravated, and you're feeling so dumb, and then you look, and you realize caps lock is on. How many of you have done the caps lock thing? Oh yeah, oh yeah, my friends. You would, I'm so glad to see those with equal mind here today. So, so here's the truth about the cap locks. Immediately you feel like an idiot. Immediately you think, oh, I'm the dumbest person on earth. Even worse, if you had the caps locked on, and you said forgot password and did the whole thing with the email. And then when you went to type it in, you're saying, why is the caps lock? Oh, no. And then you try to type your old password in. And what does it tell you? Must have new password. And you're like, Argh. blood of goat or whatever it is you're going to put. So today I want to talk about how there's really three simple things we can do. But I'm going to give you one. Uh, one thing I want you to do today, now if you got to watch the Christmas sermon, if you didn't, I encourage you to watch that because it's really true what I said there. And I have never in my life talked about spit in a Christmas Day sermon, but I did last week. So if you missed it, you'll have to look it up because that's part of the deal. But here's what, I, here's what this whole story that we're going to look at today is. And we're going to be in the next few weeks in just a few chapters right around this story in Luke chapter 14. And today, what this is about, you ready for this, is connecting with others. We always look for this huge, super spiritual thing to say, how can I be more spiritual? Well, you need to share the gospel. Yes, that's important. You need to go out and be a missionary. Well, that's a great thing. But the truth is, when you look at the life of Jesus, you know what he did a lot? You ready? This is huge. Here we go. You ready? You're going to love what I'm about to say, Peggy. I know you're going to love what I'm about to say. You know what Jesus did a lot? Ate with people. It's true. If you want to know, Peggy's like, yes, I got two thumbs up. If you want to know what heaven is like, look what Jesus did on earth. And you know what he did on earth a lot? You ready? He ate with people. See, we tend to think that this hour on Sunday is super important. And I hope as a pastor that it's a little important. I really do. But the truth is, it might be, don't tell other pastors, it probably is more important that you connect with people in other ways. If you're going to love people, that happens very rarely on Sunday morning. When does it happen? Other times, how do I get to know Rodney and about his life? We go eat together and hang out together. How do we get to know each other better? We go eat together and I go, wow, he's messier than I am. He's not. He's not. I wish, I wish he was. I wish he was. So three keys to finding your purpose, and these all have to do with connecting. Number one, live with eternal priorities in mind. Why? Because I don't know about you, Rick Warren, in his great book, by the way, if you've never read Purpose Driven Life, great book. Rick Warren starts with these words, and I think they are the words for life. Here they are. You ready? Here's the key words for Rick Warren. Here's what he said, and it's perfect. He says, it's not about you. If you want to change your life, recognize it's not about you. And one of the keys, listen, I used to teach junior high. Some of you have had junior hires. I've had junior hires. They're all, gr my youngest son, my youngest daughter is getting ready to graduate. I'm getting old. Some of you are now having grandchildren that are in junior high. And one of the most important lessons in junior high is this. It's not about you. But can I tell you a secret? 
as you get older, we're just better at pretending that we believe that. If we're honest, we're still like that junior higher who thinks life's about us. And we yell and we get frustrated and aggravated over most things that have to do with somebody bothering me. You know, why do I get upset on I-95 when somebody's in the left lane going below what I think the speed limit should be? They're not going below the speed limit. You, get, you catch that? They're going what I believe the speed limit should be, correct? Why do I get aggravated with them? Because they're in my way, and life is about me. And if you're tailgating me, it means you don't know how to drive. And if you're going too slow in front of me, it's because you don't know how to drive. And guess what? It's probably me that doesn't know how to drive. But don't tell anybody else that. So here's what Jesus says. He goes to a Pharisee's house, and the Pharisees thought they were better than everybody else, and he's noticing that they seated everybody in order of their riches or their position. Can you imagine if we did that on Sunday morning? By the way, my mom went to a church that elected teams one time based on the best givers in the church. Yeah, it wasn't long before the demise of that church. Can I tell you that? And, and so it's a terrible thing. So here's what Jesus says. Then Jesus says to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, by the way, that assumes that we do that. When's the last time you went out of your way to invite somebody to eat? to go out with somebody, to take some time. When you go to a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends. By the way, this isn't an excuse for you to not invite your friends. Your brothers or your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back and you'll be repaid. But when you give a banquet, listen to this, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you'll be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you'll be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So what's Jesus saying here? He's saying, you don't have to spend time with your family. No, that's not what he's saying here. What he's saying is, watch your priorities when you go out of your way. Do you only go out of your way for people who can do something for you? We've all had a friend who was our friend when we could do something for them, and then all of a sudden we couldn't do something for them. Maybe we had a boat. And we had a boat for years, and they were our friend. And then we sold the boat, and we never heard from that friend again. I don't know if you've had anything like that happen. I had something like that happen this year. And I went, amazing how we haven't heard from them since this happened. Hmm. Jesus says, go out of your way for people who can do nothing for you. Why? Because everyone needs, listen, everyone needs connection. Jesus came to earth and purposefully over and over touched people to heal them. Now, I understand there's times you can't. We've got folks right now going through chemotherapy. They can literally not touch people right now. But most of us can. We just don't or don't want to. Jesus is sitting at this dinner saying, not only invite people out, invite people out that you normally wouldn't invite out. Go out of your way. You know that person who talks a little bit too much? You know who I'm talking about? You were looking at me. I got it. Okay. You're right? They talk a little too much, and they're a little loud, and you're like, do we have to take them to dinner? Yes. Number two, choose Christ before good things. I used to work at Quincy's. What's really funny is Janet, who goes to our church, used to work with me at Quincy's. She said on my Christmas card, I wrote the wrong name down. I have no idea how I did that. I've known her forever. And we used to work on Quincy's, and, and one of the things at Quincy's we noticed is we threw away a lot of people's food, because uh, they weren't allowed to take boxes. I don't know if you knew that story. They weren't allowed to take boxes, and the reason why is because people would just load a box and put Quincy's out of business, which they did anyway, right? And so we threw away a lot of food. Why? Because people would go up with two plates, fill this plate, this, 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 and their eyes were bigger than their stomach, right? Listen, you have lots of choices when it comes to living. Make sure you're making the best choices. You'll notice all these things that Jesus talks about are not bad things. They're just at the wrong time. Listen to what Jesus says. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to, to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat 
at the feast in the kingdom of God. Isn't that awesome to know that there's going to be a feast in the kingdom of God? Jesus right then could have said, there's no feasting in the kingdom. No, no. Jesus said, there's feasting. And then he continues. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet, invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent several servants or sent his servants to tell those who had been invited Come, for everything is now ready. By the way, this is so much better than reading off of paper because this is so much bigger and I cannot see anymore because I'm old. I just wanted to point that out. Come, for everything's now ready. But listen, but they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I just bought a field and I must go and see it. That's not a bad thing, right? I bought a field. I don't know what it looks like. I need to go check it out. Is that an evil thing? No, and actually you're dumb if you don't, because it might be swampland, right? So it continues. The first said, I bought a field. The second, please excuse me. Another said, I just bought a brand new car of oxen. Okay, it doesn't say car. I just bought a brand new car, and I'm on my way to try it out. That's definitely not bad. I had a guy say to me last night, I had to borrow my daughter's car. I said, why'd you have to buy your daughter's car? He said, because I don't have a car anymore. I go, I know some places where you can go and get a car. And it would not be bad to go and test drive a car before you drive a car. You really should drive the car around the block before you take it. You really should test out the oxen. But they were just making excuses. They have one more. Please excuse me, still another said. I just got married, so I can't come. Whoa, if anybody had the best excuse, that guy had the best. I just got married. I'm on my honeymoon. And Jesus says, none of those are good excuses. Why? Not because those aren't appropriate things, but because of priorities. Your family is important. Your health is important. Make sure your car is running is important. Make sure your house is okay after a hurricane is important. But it should not be as important as what God wants you to do. And that's where we get out of balance. Because we put family before God. We pretend we don't, but the truth is we serve our family. Now, I don't want you to have inappropriate priorities either. I remember, this actually happened years ago. I was at a church. This is like the last time I was at a church before I was on church staff. And I was at a church, and that morning the associate pastor gets up. He looks really shaken, and he goes, the pastor's not coming this morning because he's spending time with his family. And I remember thinking, I don't know if that's super spiritual or super dumb. I'm trying to figure out which. By the way, that's none of my business. But years later, my mentor said to me, the key is priorities and time. There's going to be time that you can't spend time with your family. It doesn't mean they're not important. There's going to be other times that you can't spend time doing this, but it's a matter of priorities at the right time. There's nothing wrong with getting married and spending time with your spouse. That's not what Jesus was saying here. What Jesus was saying is, Are you choosing anything else above me? And by the way, you know who gets to decide that? You. It's between you and God. Was that pastor wrong to spend time with his family that morning? Maybe. I don't know. It seemed like a silly... Can you imagine if I just walked out in the middle of service and said, I got to go eat with my son. He's here this morning. See ya. You'd be like, "Uh, are we not important? Right? So priority doesn't mean that you don't care about somebody, but it means there's times when you understand I've got to do A before I can do B. Number three, invite others to be a part. Oh, by the way, I want to say in that, hey, go out of your way to find time to prioritize people. If you're not in a small group, join a small group. Join a Bible study. We're going to be starting a Sunday morning Bible study here in a few weeks. I've got a Sunday night Bible study that I lead. There's two other, three other, three other Bible studies that are going on during the week. We'll let you know about those. But find a place to connect with people. And if it's not a Bible study, here's what I would tell you. Go out of your way to invite somebody to lunch. Go out of your way to find somebody after. <clears throat> Don't walk into church late and run out as fast as you can. Don't walk into church late, sit like this. Sorry, if you're sitting like this, don't be mad. 
I always worry if I do that that somebody, oops, sorry. There we go. Got you back there, right? And then at the end of church, go, nobody talked to me. Because you know what the pastor's going to say to you? Well, who did you talk to? What your mama used to say? Takes a friend to be a friend, right? See, you heard it. The servant, invite others to be a part. Number three, the servant came back and reported this to his master. The owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly in the streets and alleys, the town, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. Sir, the servant said, we've already done that, and there's still room. Then the master told his servants, go to the roads, the country lanes, compel them to come in, so my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who are invited will get a taste of my banquet. What was Jesus saying? If you make other things a priority all the time, then you're not really choosing to follow Christ. Jesus is looking at these Pharisees and saying, hey, you guys are super spiritual, you're doing all these spiritual things, but you're not really connecting with other people because you care about them. You're connecting with other people so you can get something from them. This year, I want to encourage you to do one thing. Connect with people because you care. Connect with people because God loves them. Connect with people because they matter. Can I tell you what happens when you begin to connect with people? When you get to know people, and this happens, I, t I tell this story all the time because it's absolutely true. People come to my small group for the first time. They leave small group and they call their friends. Oh, Pastor Eric, you should just hear him. He just teaches so well. Such a good Christian. I mean, he's just an example of what we should all be doing. Three weeks later, they're calling their friend back. I'm not sure why he's the pastor of the church. We might want to think about. I've gotten to know him now and he really, that, that dude's messed up. That's, he really has issues. When you get to know anybody, can I tell you something that you have to have? You have to have grace for them. Why? Because we're all broken. So we need grace with each other. As Jesus sat at this dinner, <laughs> imagine somebody who could look around this room and know all your thoughts. That was Jesus. Can you imagine if you had thought bubbles right now that the pastor could look around and see, oh, Greg had his arms crossed. Oh, now I know why. I see the bubble. Pastor Eric's an idiot. Not sure, right? Over here, Bill, bacon. That's all I see, just bacon. Bacon, waffles. Well, that's mine. Mine's bacon and waffles, actually. Yeah. What if you could do That's Jesus. And he's looking at them and saying, what are your priorities? Tom Papa is one of my favorite comedians. And one of the things he was talking about, he was talking about COVID. And he says, do you remember during COVID when you couldn't go visit your family because your face would kill them? I mean, you might breathe on them and your breath would kill them. So you had to stay at home. And then he said this, wasn't that wonderful? Just a wonderful excuse. I can't be with you. So here's what I want to say about that. That's not an excuse anymore. Your buffet just got a little emptier with that excuse. So it's time to say, God, what do I need to put on my plate this year to connect with other people? One of my friends said, we need to get together. And I said, yeah, let's get together in January. And then he said these words, what day? And I went, oh, no. And I sent him a day and he said, I've already accomplished one of my New Year's resolutions. To make Eric have lunch with me. I'm like, great. That's a very good friend I am, right? But do that. Go out of your way to actually connect with somebody this week. Dave, we're going to go out to grills again. I was thinking about that the other day. My treat. Depends on what you get, actually. <laughs> but who do you need to connect with? Who do you need to go out of the way for? Maybe there's people you can just drop in on. Maybe there's people that you can call and say, let's go to breakfast. But whatever it is, connect with them this year, not because of what they do for you, but just because of who they are. Love them for who they are. Let's go to the Lord and pray this morning. Father, thank you for this time this morning. I thank you for your word. I really pray, Lord, that this year we would connect with others. Lord, we find our significance in you when we learn how to love others and be loved by you. 
Father, I pray for that one this morning that feels insignificant. Maybe they feel like a failure. Maybe they feel like their whole life is cap locks on. Father, would you just bless them today? Let them know you love them. Father, I pray that you today would speak to each one. In Jesus' name, amen.